Hey guys, welcome to another Game Explained discussion. I'm your host, Andre Seegers, and we're again joined by Derek Bender to discuss all the latest news from Smash Bros. Wii U and 3DS from this past week. So let's get right into it. Alright Derek, so this week is kind of interesting for Smash Bros. news. I wouldn't say there was, there really wasn't that much that was like completely new, but it did shed some more light on, you know, several aspects of the game we already knew about. And this starts with um, Lucario, and we actually get a better idea of how he's going to work this time. Um, specifically, the on Monday, um, it gives us a drug comparison of his Aura Sphere uh, at his weakest and strongest points. And Sakurai even elaborates that the attack gets faster and more powerful when the Aura Sphere is at its biggest, which again is tied to um, you know, Lucario's health. The more damage he has, the more powerful he gets, and the faster and more powerful this, this ball becomes. Um, so just looking at this, this looks like a pretty big difference. I can't remember if this, if this matches up, you know, how this compares with Brawl. Just looking at the size comparison here, this seems a lot more significant than what was shown in Brawl. Like, you could, you could, you could, you could definitely tell one was bigger than the other in Brawl, but the biggest one here looks absolutely massive. Uh, like this takes up a good portion of the screen, and I don't remember that. I remember it being like his best, uh, his strongest point being comparable to Mewtwo's uh, fully charged attack in, in Melee, um, except it fired in a straight line. Uh, it might be a little wrong, it might be a little bigger than that, but at any rate, uh, the size of it, the, sphere, uh, the Aura Sphere here, uh, looks absolutely huge, and I think Sakurai might have listened to us and how we're saying, let's. I want to see him change up the uh, older characters a bit more. And this seems like the most obvious change we've seen yet. Yeah, I, I'm. while you were talking, I looked up images from Brawl, and it does appear this is a lot bigger now, um, which is great. And you know, he already mentioned that they are making, you know, as I said before, they are making uh, the aura, you know, a bigger, a bigger distinction this time around. Like it's because and when we talked about it, look, when we talked about Lucario last time, um, you know, in Brawl, I never felt that big of a difference from his weakest to strongest points. And it really does seem like they're going to make that a big focus this time around. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I guess we can just roll right into Tuesday's screenshot, which is still focused on Lucario. Uh, it doesn't only, only affect his strength and regular attacks and his aura sphere, but also his recovery. Um, because it shows in this next picture, uh, Sakurai says that when Lucario shoots out aura from his hands uh, to fly with extreme speed, you can control its flight direction. If Lucario's aura is fully charged, it can fly extremely far, so be careful not to accidentally launch out of the area. But that also means that you can recover from a lot farther away, too. Right, and that's completely new as far as I know. I don't think that factored in at all in the brawl. No, I don't believe so either. I don't think that had anything to do with just mattered with your pure strength and like your physical ha attacks and then of course the aura sphere itself mm -hmm. i don't remember that at all from the aura sphere and you can actually see it shooting out of his hands as he's recovering now yeah the, the, and this i mean it looks really cool and um I, I think you had some loose control over the direction in brawl but i'm getting the impression mm -hmm. that you have more control over it this time um and i'm guessing well especially because if your flight path is longer it makes sense that you know you have more time um, to, you know, to influence your direction. Yeah. I, I think in uh, Brawl, you could, like, kind of arc him a little bit, but nothing yeah. too major. Um, but this, it looks like he's going in almost a 90-degree angle at some point, or at least uh, 40, 45, 60. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, it's interesting that it's integrating that much into it. I'm wondering if his aura ability will affect his other specials. That's a good one, um, because I guess so far yeah, we have only seen it affect a special, or you know, a couple of the specials. But I, I would say between these two, there's probably a good chance of that. Mm -hmm. Because he's known as the Aura Pokemon, so probably a lot of the things he does channels his aura. So, yeah, it, it really seems they cranked up the risk-reward for Lucario, where he won't really be that effective when he's good and healthy but you beat on a bit he'll be seems like he'll be really devastating yeah i mean i really like the idea again of just making these characters feel as different as possible from one another and going in this direction with lucario is a good idea um though you know i i do think that because in monday's screenshot we see his aura sphere at its strongest point according to sakurai i think that this proves our not a theory but our our idea we had of lucario you know mega evolving maybe when he reaches a certain point Mm. Um, you know, by you know, by getting too far, too damaged. Um, so I think at this point, if they do have his mega evolution in the game, 
um, it's going to be confined to his, to the Smash Ball. Yeah, I, I didn't even think about that, but you're right. I mean, if that's the strongest point. It's he might well he might not have mentioned it, but it's probably more than likely that it's going to be con- yeah just a, just a Smash Attack, which you know is still fine. Yeah, it's fine. I just you know I, I thought it would have been a really cool idea had they incorporated it, but. This will work. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now speaking of Pokemon, because that isn't the only Pokemon news uh, this week, Wednesday's screenshot shows us that uh, Palkia will be reappearing in this game, who first appeared in Brawl in the Spear Pillar stage. But this time, as Sakurai mentions, he's coming out of the Pokeball. Uh, so, you know, that just means he's going to be a standard, you know, standard Pokeball item this time, so he'll appear at random. Um, now, I wonder, though, is he going to function... I don't remember how he worked in Brawl. I'm not sure if you do. But Sakurai here mentions that he's performing his, his signature move, being a spatial rent. Now, I don't even remember what I don't even know what that is. But I've never played them in the <laughs> games, so maybe maybe you can enlighten me a little bit. Well, the thing with uh, Dialga and Palkia was that they're Pokemon of space and time. Um, I believe it's been so long since I played that stage in Brawl, just because I found it annoying most of the time. I hated that stage. <laughs> um, but then t- the stage would flip, and it also would the time would slow down at certain points. Correct. Uh, yes, yeah, I mean, a bunch of different effects could happen, and one of them was, yeah, it could flip, and then time would slow down, it'd be like yeah. slow motion, right? That that was, uh, specifically because of these two Pokemon. Oh, okay. Um, oh, was wait, the, that's Pal- right, are, are these the two Pokemon that, uh, there would always be, basically, I think, one of them would randomly appear during the level? Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay, I gotcha. Exactly, and he would cause the stage to flip. Okay. Um, doesn't seem to be the case here, Spatial Rend, I can't remember the move specifically in Pokemon. Because I don't use legendaries that much, so I don't try out their special moves all that much. Mm-hmm. Um, but looking at his attack here, I I'm not sure if this is an attack that he'll go down and then like it'll branch outwards in both directions, or if he'll just appear and like hit whatever is directly in front of him. So you don't think it'll ha- it might have a similar effect as it did in the actual brawl arena? I don't think it's going to flip the stage. Um, okay. It doesn't. It doesn't seem to be the case here. It'd be. It'd be really weird to just have everything flipped upside down all of a sudden. Uh, I mean, it could. I mean, it very well could. But I don't think that's what it does. I'm not. Mm, I'm not sure. <laughs> now, do you think having him being just a standard Pokeball or Pokemon means that Spear Pillar won't be reappearing as a classic stage in this game? Probably not. I. I wouldn't have expected it to come back anyway. I don't. You know, I wasn't a huge fan of it. You weren't a huge fan nope. of it. So <laughs> I get the feeling this wasn't the most popular of stages. Plus, Spear of Pillar was very much based around Diamond and Pearl. And those right. are two generations old now. So there's no real, real reason to keep them around. The thing I find most interesting is that we've, I think, I think so far we've seen two Pokeball Pokemon so far. Palkia and... Uh, Xerneas. Xerneas. Um, both of them are legendaries so i'm wondering if the if it's going to keep us the same mix of normal you know regular pokemon that you find in the game or have a lot more of the legendaries now because there are a lot of legendaries out there yeah that's a good one um unless he's just making it top heavy he's just showing off all the legendaries first before going to the lesser pokemon <laughs> like that, that can still very well be i mean there's i mean we have 700 plus to choose from at this point so yeah have fun narrowing it down <laughs> <laughs> okay now moving on to thursday's screenshot um this one doesn't uh, show anything new at all it just shows rosalina um doing her like her her aerial kick type thing and then sakurai just elaborates that it is said that the cosmos is beneath rosalina's gown um <laughs> that almost sounds kind of dirty to me like i don't know what he's yeah. applying there <laughs> <laughs> I read that there's like there's a lot of weird connotations yeah, with that and are. uh uh <laughs> I was like I'm just going to move on from here cuz honestly there's not a whole lot to say No, I mean, there isn't. It, I mean, I guess it, it's a cool looking move but we knew that before. It doesn't reveal anything new. So Yeah, we already mentioned how, you know, any of her attacks sort of create a galaxy or I guess it's a cosmos. Cosmos, yeah. Uh whenever she attacks and this is just more i guess we know the origin of it now they come out of her dress <laughs> <laughs> good to know thanks sakurai yep. all right but perhaps more interesting is that this level that this picture takes place in the um pyrosphere level from metroid and so does friday's screenshot and this one's actually a lot more interesting because it shows off a new assist trophy based on mother brain um and apparently when she appears she'll fire a her laser brain attack um, and we can see it like taking out 
Oh, who is that? Samus in this I, picture? I or? think that's Samus in that in this picture. Yeah, yeah. This I I don't know. I mean, Metroids were in Brawl as an assist trophy, and they were kind of cool. But Mother Brain looks freaking awesome. She looks really cool. Um, yeah, like the amount of detail, like how. Yeah, her, she's inside of her like little container unit or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. And the glass is broke, and yeah. you can see the rings coming out from wherever, uh, like in the final boss battle. And what's most interesting to me is that they gave her uh, her laser brain attack, which um, she doesn't have in the original Metroid. That's an attack that she only uses in that sort of monstrous form at the end of Super Metroid, oh. when it has the whole arms and legs thing. Um, now, if she's using it here, it's likely she doesn't like all of a sudden become that. Um, but it's still cool that they gave her a little bit more. So what I'm curious about is if it's only uh, that one move, like it only hit one person and it's in line, or if it'll, like, let's say you're you're fighting, you throw it at two people and these two, two people are fighting, and Mother Brain catches them both and lifts them up and starts damaging them. I mean, it really seems between all the assist trophies we've seen, it seems like they're going all out with them. Like, they did a good job in Brawl. It really seems like they're going even more out this time, at least based on the few we've seen so far. I like that the uh, assist trophies that we've seen so far have been really unpredictable. Like, I would have never guessed that Skull Kid would be a assist trophy, or never in my mind would I think that they'd go with Mother Brain. Yeah. Now, there has been a couple that's returning, like Starfy, but it's still cool that they're going sort of outside the box and thinking of ways that they can really make these work. And... I, I mean, I know you're not the biggest Metroid player, but for me, who you know loves the series, this is a really cool detail. Yeah, it seems to be. I mean, I I, I did like the Metroid Prime series, but I don't think they featured Mother Brain at all. So <laughs> I, I'm mostly going off uh, the cartoon inter- uh, the cartoon oh, portrayal because <laughs> <laughs> the Captain N uh, portrayal of Mother Brain, which is that's amazing. Horrible. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> so I, now, as I like to point out, every time there's an assist trophy, um, this basically confirms that. Uh, that Mother Brain won't be a playable character. <laughs> <laughs> I guess not. I guess, you know, if you can't have Ridley, having Mother Brain would have been cool, but I think she'd have to be in her monstrous form, and she's a little bit bigger than the uh, <laughs> other characters in that form. So, so. <laughs> <laughs> so, now, this still raises... I mean, maybe it doesn't raise a question. I'm going to raise a question based on it, though. So we see, you know, uh, Mother Brain in the Metroid Arena, but you know, they're not tied together. She's an assist trophy. She can appear wherever. Um, but we still haven't seen any more of... We actually haven't seen Ridley at all, who is supposed to... Uh, you know, who Sakurai's hinted at appears um, in the stage. And people are still wondering, like, if, if he might... You know, if he's a stage hazard or if he's going to be a playable character, you know? I just wonder where they could be going with that. Because it does seem <laughs> odd that they haven't shown him at all. And he's supposed to be here in some form. Um, yeah, he might just be a background detail. It's hard to say for now. I mean, I know his, you know, I'm one of those people that really hopes Ridley becomes a playable character because he is so iconic. He's a, he's appeared in more um, Metroid games than Mother Brain. Right. Uh, he's, he's sort of like the de facto villain. And yeah, he's usually a lot bigger than Samus, but his size fluctuates a lot between, you know, same size in, as in the original Metroid to uh, about twice her, twice her size in you know, uh, Super Metroid to, you know, easily five times her size when he's Meta Ridley in Metroid Prime. Oh, and look at Bowser, even. He's huge in quite a few of the games, and, you know, he's, mm-hmm. uh, you know, he's puny in Smash Brothers by comparison. <laughs> yeah, look at, uh, look at his size in Sunshine or whatever he makes himself grow in, uh, Galaxy. Exactly. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I think, too, the fact that you mentioned that, you know, he's a villain. Um, and I think that'd be cool to see just more of them in general. I mean, like, you know, I've, I've wanted to see more w- women in the game, and we're getting that. It'd be cool to see more villains as well. And, you know, that's probably one of the bigger unrepresented villains in Smash Brothers, I would say. Yeah, because we haven't, I mean, unfortunately with the Metroid series, we're not really able to get other characters because usually it's just Samus. And the best way to get another, the only other character that really works, because there are characters you can choose from, but I wouldn't, you know, I, I, I wouldn't prefer them. I prefer Ridley. Yeah, <laughs> Ridley, exactly. I think Ridley is would. the de facto character that you'd want from Metroid in addition to Samus. And he's been with the series since the beginning, right? Like, if yeah. Or, yeah. So, yeah, he's iconic. Um, people want to play as him, and he's a villain, which will help you know, balance the roster a little bit better than it is you know, right now. Especially with the fact that the King Dedede is not even really a villain these days. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think that'd be a cool thing to see. 
All right, well, I think that wraps up our Smash Brothers discussion this week. So thanks, guys, for watching. Um, if you liked our discussion, make sure to follow us and like us on Facebook and Twitter at GameXplain. You can find links to them in the description below. It's a good way to keep up with everything we post. And, of course, keep an eye on GameXplain.com for more on Smash Brothers Wii U and 3DS and everything else gaming, too. All right, thanks, guys. Bye.